Hello there, welcome to Proper DIY. My name is Stuart Matthews and they always talk about bricks and mortar. That's what it's about. Actually today it's about the opposite. It's about taking bricks and mortar away, putting in a lintel and making a new doorway in brickwork. Coming up. An essential part of my garage to workshop conversion strategy relies heavily on accessing the garage from a side entrance that currently doesn't exist. So, time to add a new doorway through this plain brick wall. I start by marking out the centre line of the door on the inside of the wall with some help from my handy cheap laser level. I'm using this laser level more and more now as it's not only as accurate as a spirit level but far more user friendly. I pinged a chalk line which gives me a permanent reference to work from to mark out the width of the doorway. I decided to make it very obvious which bricks I wanted to remove and replace with a lintel so I painted them up just so I could double and triple check. It would be really embarrassing to remove the wrong course of bricks at this point. This also means I can measure how big the door and the frame has to be to plug this future hole. So the plan today is to break out these five bricks I've marked up in yellow and replace those with a reinforced concrete lintel. Once that lintel is in place and the mortar around it has got some strength, then maybe tomorrow I can do two saw cuts, one either side, and open a doorway here and fit a door and a door frame, which I've already got made specifically for this job. Now, before you start any work like this in brickwork, it's really important to understand what this brick is doing. I'm talking about whether it's a load-bearing wall. Now, in my situation, I know that this isn't a load-bearing wall. This is just a side of my garage, so it's one brick thick and it has no second floor. So I think it's really important before you do this to get advice from a builder or a civil engineer or structural engineer. As this isn't a load-bearing wall, I'm not going to be propping this today. So once I take these five bricks out, I do have a small risk of some bricks above in like a triangular pattern falling into that void. Now this is a new garage and the mortar is still very good. So I think that that risk is very low and these bricks will stay in place. Having said that, once I've cut this slot, I'm going to get the reinforced concrete lintel in as quickly as possible and get the dry pack mortar in so I can get some strength just to cut down on the risk or any likelihood of that happening. So I think it's time for some demolition. I cut a narrow slot at the very top of the mortar course I'm about to remove so I would be left with nice clean brick above the lintel and then continued with stitch drilling out the mortar course. Cutting out this mortar course before I do any other work helps remove a root for vibration between the demolition of the bricks below with the breaker and the more sensitive bricks above which I'm trying not to disturb. This method of not using any acros or strong boys to support the wall above only works if one, the wall is non-load bearing, two, it's narrow like a single doorway and three, if there's plenty of brick courses above the opening. If there's not plenty of wall above this opening and it finished only a couple of courses above, then expect those bricks to end up on the floor or your head. The type of lintel I'm installing here is a pre-stressed concrete lintel, which has the same cross-sectional size and shape as a standard brick, so it fits nicely into the wall and is readily available for most builder's yards. It has a steel tendon running through its centre that is essentially stretched before the concrete is poured around it. So when the concrete is fully cured, the tension is released from this tendon and it has the effect of pulling the concrete into itself, which gives it additional strength for its size compared to a simply reinforced concrete beam. 
So I've got the lintel in position. I've used plastic shims at each corner to level it up within a millimetre or so. It's not perfect because the laser level and spirit level is telling me one thing. The brick courses are telling me something else, which means that the brickwork is out slightly. And I've picked somewhere in between. It's got to look right, even if I know it's not perfectly level as well. So I've just also mixed up some really dry three to one sand and cement mixture. I'm going to be using this as a dry pack type mix to pack between the lintel and the brickwork above and obviously underneath the lintel at either end. Before I put any of this mixture in I have to make sure that it's free from debris, free from dust and it's also wetted down and that way I'm going to get a good bond between this mortar and the brickwork. as well as a trowel and a bucket and a float. It's always important to have the secret stick handy. You see, that is so dry. I've mixed such a dry mix here. It's got enough water in it to hydrate the cement, so that will go hard. It doesn't take very much at all. It only has to be moist. But it's strong enough that I can actually pack it in there and it doesn't all slop out. So I've totally given up on the trowel. The stick is definitely the way to go. I think I need to patent the stick. And maybe I need to talk to Stanley or Silverline. So I'm losing light rapidly, but it's one of those jobs that really does have to be finished because as I said earlier, there is a risk that some of this brickwork will move, so it's one of those jobs that really does need to be done in a day. Before tackling the main vertical cuts from the outside with the big petrol disc cutter, I use my 4 inch electric angle grinder just to put a shallow cut on the inside of the wall to help end up with an accurate inside edge. I use the electric grinder as I didn't want to end up with carbon monoxide poisoning inside the garage. As it was, it was nasty enough without it. For the main vertical cuts, I hired this 300mm two-stroke disc cutter for the day, which also has a standard hose connection so the blade can be continuously covered with water to help dust suppression. Proper PPE is not only essential for work like this, you really need to be fully protected to be able to concentrate on the cut while being sprayed continuously with dust suppression water and carrying the 10 kilogram immediate amputation machine. Doing a job like this, you have to accept you're gonna get very wet and very dusty and there's nothing you can do about it. For each cut, I fix the batten on the outside of the cut to act as a guide for the blade. This worked really well as with the water and the large amount of brick slurry coming off the blade, I don't think any line I marked would have been visible for very long. With the main cuts complete, it was very satisfying to use my SDS drill on the breaker setting to remove all the bricks, which was really easy. Although I did have this urge to push the whole wall out in one, but managed to restrain myself. With the bottom course cleaned up, I could offer up the frame I made with a sense of relief as it actually fit. To tie the frame to the brick, I used 8mm frame fixings all round. If you're using fixings like this, it's really important to shim between the brick and the frame. So when you tighten them up, it doesn't pull the frame out of shape. Before putting all of the fixings in, I actually fitted the door because I wanted to find out if there was any twist in the frame before it was too late. 
everything looked good, so I completed the fixings. However, with the door on, I couldn't actually use my SDS drill deep enough. So I found out for the first time ever that you can actually chuck an SDS bit into a drill driver, which solved the problem. On the hinge side, you can see I put a fix in above and below each of the three hinges, which is probably overkill, but this is where the biggest stress on the frame will be. A bit of filler to hide the fixings and some expanding foam all around to fill the gap between the frame and the brickwork meant that I could tack on some trim on both sides and the door was complete. So the doorway is now fully complete. The door is on, the trim is on, it's all fully painted and looking, I think, quite nice actually. I'm really glad I've got an access in the side of the garage. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe to see more of this type of work. So from a garage that's now starting to look a little bit more like a workshop, I'll see you next time.